candidates and ask relevant questions. The requirement of this session is that each person will subject themselves to the generally accepted meeting procedure and to the code of conduct specified in the election regulations. To this end, any conduct that seeks to undermine the dignity of any person present or absent will not be tolerated. This, this includes the use of inflammatory or discriminatory language, gestures, booing or any sounds that create a negative or hostile environment. Persons who are responsible for such behaviour will be asked to leave the venue immediately. The chairperson is in charge of the session. The chairperson will guide the session and make the necessary rulings as required. Election Commission members are present to monitor conduct and to provide support where requested by the chairperson. In extreme circumstances, which won't happen in this case, the Election Commission may take on the chairing role. Thank you, statement. I might be tiny, but I can be quite possible. So if you infringe on any of the rules, I will be Madam Speaker and pull you out of order. All right. This isn't South African Parliament. Okay. So I'm going to be starting with the candidates on the left. Um, this side, sorry, my left. Thank you for the clarification. My left. And so there'll be two minutes to speak. We're keeping time up in front, so please keep an eye out for that and don't go over your time. Maneruva Beregi, in Indinetwa Gloria Paidamoyo Chkaunda. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Gloria Paidamoyo Chkaunda. Je voudrais vous, vous représenter pour le SRC de 2016. If you take a quick glance at the university's mission statement, you will find that UCT aims to take advantage of expanding global networks to tackle the issues faced by the world. Amongst the fun foundational principles is a commitment to stimulate international linkages, to attract a cultural and international diverse community of scholars and advance UCT as an Afropolitan university by extending the continental networks and global connections and partnerships. UCT prides itself on its diverse community and indeed the discourses that have gripped our campus this past year have emphasized the need to promote and protect diversity and transformation within our institution and beyond. But the question is, do international students that make up 20% of the university student population feel a part of this discourse? Has the SRC made strides to promote the diverse Afropolitan and global cu cultures on campus that UCT boasts about in its prospecta and websites? And in fact, has it made sufficient efforts to address the practical challenges faced by international students such as high international student fees, lack of housing, lack of funding and scholarships, and difficulty with new immigration laws? It would appear, because I am standing here, it has not. My name is Gloria Chkounder, candidate number seven. I am running for SRC out of a genuine concern for the needs of my fellow international students who make a large part of the demographic, on cam the demographic on campus and yet have been excluded from the discourses and policy making on U at UCT. I'm not running for office, I'm running for you. Thank you. Lady Hadebe, candidate number 10. I'm running for SRC because I recognize the you in UCT. I'm running for SRC on three main points financial exclusion, jamming shuttles, and parking on campus. Firstly, financial exclusion needs to be addressed as a matter of urgency on this campus. Too many students are being financially excluded and not enough is being done. Students' opportunities should not be limited because of their finances. Secondly, parking on campus also needs to be addressed. We need to reclaim back those, staff, those student bays that get taken by staff each and every year. Thirdly, jammy shuttles. We want an effective jammy and an efficient jammy. We need to update the schedule and rework the routes. A problem for one student is a problem for all students. My name is Mini Hadebe, candidate number 10. Yeah. My name is Nigel Patel, I'm candidate number 22, and I apologize if this speech isn't brilliant because I, this is, it's coming from the heart right now. Um, last year's SRC made me angry. This year's House Common Marcon made me angry. Yeah. They think it's okay to be sexist. They think it's okay to be misogynistic. They think it's okay to be transphobic. And they think it's okay to be homophobic. Yeah. And this is not contained to Marcot. This is a Capano problem. This is a College House problem. This is a res problem. Why are reses not standardized? Why, is that, why are male reses allowed to do this and female reses not allowed to do this? What's the difference? I'm running on a couple of different things if you look through the, if you look through the manual, but right now this is a problem to me. After this, we're going to Marcot. We're going to hold them accountable. Yes. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ntebohan Sikhone, candidate number 26. 
running under the proud banner of Sasko UCT. In running for SRC, I intend to do the following. Constantly engage with UCT with regards to the admission policy, especially with regards to the NBT. Con create a constant engagement between SRC and student housing in combating the issue of overallocation. Ladies and gentlemen, I am passionate about fighting for the rights and welfare of students here at UCT. Not only for those that are here at UCT, but for those that want to come to UCT. Yes. Hence, I say, I represent you, I am you. Vote for Sasko, restoring the dignity of students here at UCT. Amanda! Good evening everyone. My name is Musi Siwing Mamalo, candidate number 21. If you want an SRC that firstly exists, that is transparent, <laughs> accountable, and actually delivers, you're looking at the perfect candidate. It is about time that we actually restore the dignity that we lost in this SRC. SRC not just only needs to um, end, end their conversation in occupying offices in level 7. They need to in continue to engage with students, not only just on upper campus, middle campus, and also extending it to satellite campuses. Vote for candidate number 10 one, vote for the Malik. Activism has been very rife across campus this year. This has culminated because of the lack of leadership from leadership structures ac across the city's um, leadership structure. We are tired of forming movements. We are tired of being part of convening, of convening meetings just because we want to be heard. We are tired of being marginalized, oppressed, and we are tired of not being recognized here at UCT. We are also tired of being called the angry black students who always complain about issues of race, issues of, about the curricula, and issues about being recognized here at UCT. Students want to be heard. Students want transformative inclusivity. Yes, academic, financial, and social exclusions are very great and pertinent issues that we need to address. <coughs> However, I need to problematize the fact that a fundamental link between the above-mentioned exclusions and issues of intersectionality and mental health yes. is not drawn. Yeah. Why are we not speaking about students who are mentally um, incapac incapacitated, thus they feel not included at UCT, and thus it affects them academically, and thus they have to be academically, socially, and financially excluded at UCT. Why are we not talking about queer bodies here at UCT which are not recognized and need to be recognized? Hence, I'm running for SRC. I want an SRC which is exclusion, which doesn't exclude people, and then it includes a lot of people here. That's why I'm running for SRC. Please vote for me. For too long now, we have accepted the limited roles of rep representation that we as students can fulfill at our own university, and that has got to change. Nothing about us without us. Yes. Yes. Firstly, in a residence, it is my duty to declare my positionality as a day student. However, as a black body at this university, I have to recognize the appalling conditions in which their students are expected to exist in during transit at the beginning of the year. Furthermore, the issue of, excuse me, of the day's food voucher, which is, 20, which is under 30 then, does not even get you a decent meal at the upper campus cafeteria. You cannot even buy strips and chips. You have to buy strips or chips. <laughs> Not only that, but day students and all students across campus have increased, have experienced increased antagonism this year alone, which has exposed the nurses, which has exposed the fact that the wellness center is detached from campus. Vote for Nalmadina's candidate 16 for SRC 2016. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicola Daga, and I'm running under the brand of B as candidate number 20. As someone who's been a member of Structures of Student Governance this year, I've come to realize that an SRC that is selective in its decolonization project is not an SRC that is, that is representative of all its students. An SRC that is not free of institutional racism, classism, ableism, heteronormativity, and misogyny is not an SRC that seeks to fully deconstruct the structures of this university. As someone who is a black woman at this university, I want to problematize the issues with regards to race culture. 
The fact that I, as a black woman, the fact that I, as a woman in this institution, cannot feel safe because race culture perpetuates rape culture, that extends to the fact that women are being are being degraded and songs are sang that degrade women. The fact that women on this campus go as long as having to be labeled, go, uh, go as far as having to explain their very existence on this campus. Secondly, I want to challenge the issue of the fact that the NISVAS policy has aspects that is exclusionary. The fact that if I am excluded as an academic student and readmitted into this university, the NISVAS policy does not allow me funding for the following year. That is exclusionary to students who are mainly on NISVAS that is primarily black students. Second, uh, lastly, I want to actually speak to the fact that I believe that the SRC needs to support and endorse student movements on this campus that seeks to decolonize, that seeks to transform this university. Yes. Because an SRC and an institution that does not allow for the involvement of the students of, of, this, of, of these student movements is not an SRC that is committed to this agenda. Lastly, I want to speak to the fact that in this curriculum, I have been at UCT for the past three years, and I still cannot see myself in the curriculum. Yes. I do third year politics, advanced South African politics, and I still cannot yes. see myself in the curriculum. I'm taught nothing, but I'm taught a curriculum that does not speak to an Afrocentric university. I'm not Olandaga, candidate number 20, Anna V. Woo! If we look at polls held by faculty councils this year around the Rhodes statue, a majority of the uh, uh, students on this campus believe the statue should stay. And I'd be shocked to see what those polls would look like if we asked similar questions around homophobia, around rape culture on this campus, around ableism on this campus. I think activism has been successful in removing the statue on this campus, but it has failed in changing the mindsets of students. What we need is to move from activism into real student engagement. What we need to do is move into long-term policy decisions which can affect students for the better. As an ally, it is important for me to listen. It is important for me to conscientize myself and others around the issues and listen to students and their struggles. It's important for me as an ally to deconstruct my whiteness, deconstruct my male privilege. But also, as a man, it's important that I problematize the rape culture which exists on this campus, problematize the, the sexism which exists within residences, and problematize the, the discriminatory aspects which exist throughout this university related to race, gender, ableism, and classism. I've sat so far on the Commerce Student Council, on the SLC Review Committee, on the UCD Debating Union, two SLC subcommittees, and two Commerce subcommittees. And what I've learned is that students throughout our organization, throughout this institution, are horribly underrepresented. What we need is for students to stand up and to engage with the policies which continue to oppress us. What we need is experience in confronting many of these issues. And what we need is allies who are wishing, willing to listen, who are willing to ally towards the cause, and are willing to help those where they see they are needed. Thank you so much. My name is Marcus Gravonsky. Vote V. Claim your UCT. Thank you very much. Uh, I come as one. I stand as 27,000 UCT students. <coughs> one of the benefits of being involved in NGOs around the Cape Town area of Nyanga, Kukuleto, and Crossroads is that one learns to, to involve people in the politics that define their own lives. And the same can be applied to UCT students. UCT students understand their own conditions better than UCT management does and often better than SRC members do. So that is why I stand as students that want an SRC that is accountable to the members that elect them. While we have accountability structures such as student parliament, however, we need to expand on these. UCT members need to go to students and engage with pressing issues. Secondly, I stand as students who want to fight the prospect of financial exclusion. See, freedom means more than being able to access institutions of higher learning. I, as Lucy Pomajova, can I afford to be at UCT? Secondly, as a child of the working class, intelligence is never enough. Lastly, I want to fight against transformation. 
See, it is important that consciousness is raised from the beginning so that first years can know that it is not okay to sing songs that objectify women, yes. that it is yes. not okay to endorse rape culture. Yes. Lastly, I want to say that let us make the SRC relevant again. I stand 27,000 students. My name is Zippo Mandova, Canada number 15. I thank you. Yes! Excuse me, but like, one delay, can you please switch your flight camera? The trans collector did not give you permission to fall. Um, and yeah, our bodies are not up for communication um, by you or anybody else, especially you. So please. Students face many challenges on a daily basis. These challenges are unique, thus a one-size-fits-all solution is not going to work. Many students ask, what is UCT doing about my problem? The answer is, UCT has many structures and policies in place to address student issues. However, student issues are not being addressed as a result of the failure of leadership. As a student who has experienced these structures firsthand, I've come to learn about their inefficiencies. The job of your student representatives is to ensure that the policies and structures that are in place are being fully utilized and maximized for effective student representation. More than that, leadership is proactive. Therefore, student leadership needs to be proactive. It should be identifying students who are falling through the gaps in the current system and implement new systems to ensure that students can achieve academic success. My, my job as an SRC candidate for 2016 is not to offer you lofty ideas, but to discuss a real issue, to focus on a system that needs to be fixed, because I believe you deserve better. My name is Louise Bespia. I'm candidate number four. Thank you. Woo! Good, good evening everybody. Um, there should never come a time where silence and invisibility becomes an option in a place that exists because of us. Now my name is Samantha Bekebeke and I'm candidate number three and I'm running under the campaign of RISE. Now RISE stands for the Revival of Independent Students Empowerment and my mandate is to bring power back to our students because right now we are powerless. UCT's graduation rate shows that 25.2% of students that enroll complete their degree. But this is not because we are inadequate. A persuasive problem of universities is that students simply do not get enough preparation or support they need to either start, continue, or complete their studies. And these are things that we need to investigate and lobby in. So when we talk about issues of financial exclusion, it is important that the leaders that you elect in implement and innovate strategies and policies of financial inclusion. We need to be able to identify ourselves in this university in each and every sphere, whether it comes to the academics of this institution, whether it comes to our representation and us as students being active participation, uh, participants in the decision-making process, or whether it comes to our mere existence in this university as students. Let RISE be the spark that ignites the fire of progress in this university. Because when I ask you who represents you, I do not want your answer to be silence. Be wise and vote RISE. Thank you. All right, can we get one more round of applause for the candidates as you need? All right, now let's get to the serious business. Um, you're allowed one minute to present your question to a specific candidate. There's no general question, whoever wants to feel like answering, because uh, no one feels like answering. Yeah, you guys are scary. Um, I've been up here a few years ago and I'm still recovering from the process. Um, all right, while the candidate is speaking, there is no heckling or conversations. If you do need to converse with the person next to you, please keep it very, very quiet, but respect the candidates up here trying to present their proposals, their, their visions, as you can see by tonight. Everyone's been selling us dreams and proposals. So I encourage, I encourage difficult questions. I encourage them, but no personal attacks, right? These, these students tonight are running for the, the, highest, um, the highest position in student leadership, and so difficult questions are encouraged. But please check your privilege if that needs to be checked. Watch your language. I encourage passion, but please, please, no personal attacks. Does everyone got that? Yes. Also, no dialogues. This is not a conversation. I'm not having a small group. This isn't dinner. So all questions are directed through me, and then we'll go forward. Does everyone got that? Everyone? Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm going to take my question. It could be, I know it mustn't be general, but it could be for anyone, but I'm going to ask. 
I'm going to ask Will Elaine to ask this question. Um, last night I went to house come interrogations at Mockford. Mm. I asked the question and Michael switched off. The head student proceeded then to call Mockwardians to ask who are we Mockwardians and they banged on the table. It was a violent space for me. Uh, it was a violent space for many women in that room. Mm. Um, and I encourage everyone to come tonight to the picket inside Mockford, not outside, inside. Yeah. <laughs> There's this ideology that goes around these residents that think that once I asked a question, they said, I will protect my house. This is Mark, would you come into the lion's den? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little do they know that Mark belongs to UCT. Yeah. Oh. UCT belongs to me. Therefore, yes. I own Mark uh, yeah. 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 I'm getting to the question. <laughs> now tell me, how will you deal with those patriarchal views of that tower over there and dismantle the patriarchy that yes. gets perpetuated that resident on a daily basis. for your questions. Now one thing that I said in the beginning is that I'm tired of forming movements and I'm tired of being convening meetings. This is why, because if the SRC represented students, we wouldn't have this in the beginning. First thing, I feel like leadership in the student um, of in the residences is so detached from the leadership from the students from SRC. Why do, can we have transformation reps in the house con, but then they're not attached to transformation um, chairpersons yeah. in the student leadership positions or the student governance of the SRC? That is problematic. That is what I want to do first thing. We need to have um, simultaneous, we need to have simultaneous conversations and also activities happening in APA that is chaired by the chair of transformation than happening at residences. It is not happening. That is why we have a, a culture of exclusion, that is why we have a culture of misogyny, because they feel excluded and they feel like they're an island and then they do whatever they want. If I get it. Thank you. Thank you, Rita Bile, for your question. 
Um, yes, I said that I stand as 27,000 UCT students, but might I add that within that 27,000 students, I recognize that there are students that are very patriarchal, I recognize that there are students that are sexist, I recognize that there are students that promote institutionalized sexism. And as I mentioned in my speech, that I stand as students that want transformation from those students that are patriarchal, from those students that sing songs that objectify women. So I can never stand for students that want patriarchy. It's time to decolonize and transform UCT. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the question. And it was it was in relation to our innovation process uh, processes in regards to our academics. Now I am going to speak as a black person. In 2011, in 2012, the University of Cape Town academically excluded me from this university. Now, like I mentioned, it is not because I am incompetent. It is not because I am unable to do this work, but there are extra and external factors that impact the progress of students in this university, and these processes need to be addressed. So when we talk about academic exclusion, most of the time it is not because we are incompetent, but of a lack of support from the university structure, a lack of support by institutions and buildings, and, and, and basically, elements that were introduced by the university that claim to uphold the rights of uh, the students in this university, but they don't do that. So we need to hold these external factors uh, accountable. We need to hold the university accountable when it comes to our problems that affect us academically. This is why we need to stand for rising. It is above academics. It is above this university, but it is for us and to rise for us and for this university. Thank you. As a black woman, I'm actually very, very frustrated today because I think there's a lot of political opportunism that is going on here from Monday to now. You haven't rapped about this before. I'm tired of people rapping about us as black women. It's not know your positionality. So I want to know, and I'm going to direct this to you, Marcus, why we as black students, we have been underrepresented for the longest period in time. I want to know why, and I'm, there's no such thing as reverse racism, so when I say this, don't take it that way. Why do you think white students should be running in the SRC and usurping space when, we are, when you don't understand what we are going through at this moment? Thanks. My question is for... Um, I think um, as a subsequent candidate, you have to, aware, to be aware that um, we're not, as students, we're not only facing academic and financial exclusion, there's psychosocial problems, we have social problems. So, um, are you aware of the effectiveness of things, uh, of facilities just like our student wellness? Are you aware of how effective they are? And if they're there, like they're really helping us. And um, so if, if, if ever there is a problem, well, I can say that there is a problem. Do you guys have like, do you have a plan in helping us in terms of uh, social support? Thank you, thank you. Hi, um, my question is to one Mini. Would you specifically address the parking issue at UCT? Yeah. Now, my question is about the fact that um, Assuming that everyone has cars is quite classist. Yeah. Mm. So I'm thinking like parking, yes, it is an issue for those people that have a car, but don't you think there are more like, more important issues than benefiting the min my minority of students who need parking? I feel like there, there are bigger issues and, and parking, you're only considering the, the, the to rich people. So what do you have to say on that? Thank you. See ya. Um, sure. Does anyone have a replacement question? Yes, you sir. Ah, right, cool. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to direct my question to Miss Gloria. Uh, she's running for the international students' uh, portfolio. So, uh, my question to you is: uh, I've been here for the past I think, three years now, and I realize that uh, I apple the body which has to cater for the international student. Uh, has uh, a different view when it comes to like other international students from uh, uh, Europe and from uh, from the states. So my question is, uh, how are you going to change? Uh, 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 or how, how, do you have any suggestions to make on how best you can uh, 
accommodate other Southern African students, West African students, yes. even East African yes. students. Yes. Because uh, there's this uh, uh, different uh, approach whereby when people come from uh, from Europe or the States, they are catered for any different way for, uh, from uh, local or even African students. Mm -hmm. Because I've been here for the past three years, I haven't uh, done paragliding, I haven't gone to uh, Robin Island, I haven't been to Clifton Beach, but someone just came two months ago, they've been there already. If, if, it, if it is possible, they should be like a fan which uh, caters for those kind of activities. Both, although we're here for our educational experience, our life experiences are also uh, are good for someone healthy. Yeah. 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 Next question went to Marcus. So firstly, Alex, thank you for the question. I think what we've learned from projects like White Privilege Project, now called Disrupting Whiteness, is that, and I've learned personally, of my positionality in this university. And I've, I've learned that I need to question my position in this university and my role in affecting discourse without claiming a narrative which is not my own. But I think within my positionality in this university, I think as an ally, I play somewhat of an important role in conscientizing my fellow students of privilege and using my positionality as a tool to conscientize those students. And I think it's my duty as an ally in order to conscientize those students and use the positionality which I've had. And I've had to learn those skills throughout this entire year at this university. Learning those skills with working with, with Tato as an ally on her subcommittee as those skills within the Commerce Student Council and many of my other positions. I understand that we live within a position, uh, in, within a system, and we live within a system, particularly at this university, which is incredibly problematic, and it's one which, as an ally, I hope to fight against and help you with. All right, Bussi. Um, thank you very much for your question. Um, this is something that's actually very personal to me. I, I myself am a student who actually has uh, some kind of issues of like mental health, but I never really speak about it. I also found that spaces like um, student wellness aren't very supportive and aren't very helpful. I think that the way to go forward with that is to have um, student wellness have, uh, reviewed, just like DISCO, because of, the, of their problems, and also to have like sensitization in student leadership where student leaders in UCT are actually, uh, actually educated on these kind of issues, and I actually have workshops in place and have external people um, to actually help them to deal, how to deal with these issues in residences. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. Um, parking is currently an issue for some students, and I know you may feel as if it is classes, but the SRC is there to represent all students and if it is a problem for one student it's a problem for all and another thing that I'm running on is not only jamming, I mean not only parking is not only parking but also jammies which actually affects all students so that's another thing that I'm running on quiet quiet thank you thank you Gloria Gloria yes it's you Um, hi, thank you for your question. Um, so just in terms of IAPO, I wholeheartedly agree with your concerns. Um, we only see IAPO as international students, um, especially international students from the African region, when they want our admin fee and at registration. And I think um, that's very problematic. Um, right now, there is no actual working relationship between IAPO and the SRC um, International Student Rep, and that's exactly what I want to address. I want to insist upon IAPO being present in the International Students Forum meetings. So when we raise our issues, when we have concerns, they will address them. I also want to insist on meeting with IAPO quarterly or however uh, very often so that um, I can be um, sending whatever issues that international students have to IAPO, making sure that they address them and going back to the students and telling them what's being done. And then um, maximizing on certain events. We're supposed to have Africa Month every year in May. We were told it's going to happen in uh, the second semester. It didn't happen. So I want to maximize on those events that conscient conscientize um, students on um, um, the, the 
the relationship between South Africa and the rest of Africa. Thank you. All right, we will take the next four from the students who, or candidates rather, who haven't had a question asked, please raise their hand. Right. Okay. All right. So, questions? Questions for Sandile. Um, and firstly, I just I have to thank the Trans Collective. I, as even as a homosexual man, I've never actually interacted with trans people before. I've never been conscientized to like the issues of transgender. And I think like Tato has been the first trans woman that I've ever actually interacted with. Um, you've really like opened my mind to trans issues. So like I really want to thank the Trans Collective for that. But I just have to remark on the the statement that you guys put out about the bathroom issue. Um, and you guys said that the, it's clear that the trans collective will not be engaging UCT management or anyone else on this issue. Um, and now, Sandila, you just said that you're running on, on a platform of education, lobbying, and building a community. And unless, like, I just feel like all three of those things require engagement. Um, and lobbying is going to require engagement with UCT management. Mm -hmm. Building a community is going to require engagement with people that, um, don't share your pain, but perhaps wants to try and understand it. Um, and so I just want to ask, how are you planning to move from a politics of pain to a politics of action and a politics of engagement? Um, because that's the only way that we're going to have any change to these issues. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next question. In your speech, you mentioned um, institutional. Oh, sorry. In your speech, you mentioned institutional patriarchy and things like misogyny, etc. So my question to you is, how, like, what processes are you gonna go through to work with the raisers and with your portfolio in SRC to make sure that we dismantle institutional patriarchy. Because this means you need to speak to residences and meet with residences and wardens who make the rules and regulations, especially our female raisers, to ask them why the rules we have here are different to the rules that Kopano has. So how are you going to make sure you interact with all the raisers and come up with a solution to dismantle this institutional patriarchy? Thank you very much. And the last question. <coughs> Just before I start, are we allowed to ask someone who's already been asked? Not, no. not in this round. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any more questions for this round? Because we've been split it up three through this to people left. You've already asked a question, so I need to check if any, there are any other questions from new hands. No one? All right, even. Um, so we have class together, I know you well. So when you were talking earlier, you were specifically talking to me about the issues with first years, but I don't see it in your, in your manifesto anymore. So how do you plan on addressing the issues with, with that first year's experience? Because you are the only first year running. You are my, you are my first year person. And I, I don't see it in the manifesto. Order, order, please. <coughs> so just tell me, what do you plan to do for the, the first year experience and us not feeling at home, us knowing not what, what, what's going on, us slipping through the cracks? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now the candidates will respond. I'll remind the house to please keep the chat to a minimum. Thank you. Sandy? For your question, um, it is an important issue trying to get everyone together and support each other. The problem actually starts at these interrogations where candidates would rather tear each other down than, act, than support each other through this very emotional process. Through my time on Housecom and, and on CSC, what we find is that representatives who do run and then get part of these structures feel that they were too busy not finding out each other's strengths and not supporting each other through this process. So when it comes to the constituting meeting, no one actually knows who's, who's, best, who's best suited for the positions. And so therefore, I believe from the beginning, 
all candidates need to be supporting each other to ensure that whoever gets onto the SRC can act as a single unit. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question. Um, I firstly want to say that patriarchy in itself is a colonial construct. And it's a system of colonialism that perpetuates the degradation of women and the perception that men have of women. With that being said, I want to say that as a member of student parliament, I have been to almost three sittings this year and this matter has not been raised at all. So I then come to question the issue of the fact that firstly, the tradition within race cultures is a tradition that is being perpetuated by wardens themselves. The fact that the male residences are being allowed to sing this is an issue because it means that the wardens themselves are not taking an active step to do that. As someone who would run for SRC, I would want to then actually speak to student housing because they need to be more involved in these issues. They complain so much about issues related to formal, but they cannot complain about institutional issues related to institutional patriarchy. Student housing needs to be binded to this decision. Wardens need to be binded to this decision to be brought. And lastly, this needs to be brought to student parliament so that the SRC can be binded to the decision to actually make an active effort of actually deconstructing this. Um, Sune, thank you so much for the question. Um, ladies and gentlemen, first experience here at UCT is nonsense. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. The fact that there are students here, at, at, they are first year students here when they come here from wherever they come from, for example, from the Northern Cape, from the Eastern Cape, they get here with, the, with a facing issues such as over allocation of residences. Therefore, they do not get their all week experience. After that, SRC, bear in mind, SRC does nothing. Therefore, first years do not know the structures of UCT. <laughs> the fact that they don't know the structures of UCT feel that they are undermined by UCT. Let us, let, ladies and gentlemen, there bear in mind that first years are neglected here at UCT. The fact that I am standing here, people are asking me that as a first year, why is that you are running as, as why are you running for SRC? Because you feel like you do not have the leisure capacity to run UCT. That is a problem. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to look at me as a first year, for example. I have a lot of leadership skills. I'm the former ambassador of the Northern Cape. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. I'll say again, I am passionate about fighting for the rights of students from ground level. Not only for those that are here at UCT, but for those that intend to come to UCT. So are there any questions on the floor for these two candidates? One? And a, I need one more hand. Can you? Um, my question is directed to Nigel. Um, when it comes to the residence um, allocation, particularly when someone is in first year and entering into university, right now we have um, first year residents that tend to be male or female, and then we have co ed residents that tend to be for older students although first years can go in there. When it comes to trans um, children coming in as a, a first year, how, how do you think the residence um, system should go about dealing with those who are perhaps trans women who are not out to their parents and how do we navigate that kind of application process? And second to that, those who are non-binary trans people do not be forced to experience the violence of being um, put into a gendered race. Mm -hmm. Um, no, no, sorry about that. Um, my question is very simple and it's an issue that I, I keep asking time and time again at all these interrogations to independence. Uh, my issue is this. 
in terms of accountability, and I'm, I know they're going to deny this, but it's fine. When you want to hold accountable, when you want to hold Daso accountable, we go to to Helen Zilla. We know. We go. <laughs> when you when you want to hold Musi, sorry, uh, when you want to hold Sasko accountable, we know. Like as much, they're going to deny this, but we know we go to the Tule House. Mm. Now the problem with independence is that who do we who what structure do we say hold them accountable? Mm. Because they come, they do oh. zizi post dance, and then yeah. can't. Oh. Hold them <laughs> Thank you very much for that question. Um, I'm actually Vice Chairperson of Rainbow UCT and we're working on a policy to deal with these issues. We've actually met with student housing and the suggestion of student housing was, okay, let's put trans people and non-binary people in co-ed res. And I was like, no, because that's just going to perpetuate Marquardt being a male res where men are this type of people, where women are these type of people. What we need to do is make sure trans people and people who don't identify with a gender binary can meet when they come to SRC, can have on the application, can say so, so their parents don't know, and they can, they can come and they can meet, if their parents do not know, they, they can meet with a psychologist, not a psychologist from student wellness, one who is identified and therefore student housing, so they're ready for such issues. Um, we also want to look at things like Marquardt and making sure Marquardt is a space. So if I'm a trans man, I can go into Marquardt, I know, and it'll be, it'll be a comfortable space. That's why we're going there at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Firstly, what we do need, and I fully agree with you in terms of how do we hold independents ac accountable for their actions while they're on the SRC, because it must be noted that last year, the Z4 received the highest number of votes for the SRC's election, and she turned out to be our biggest problem. Yeah. But by saying that, I have to acknowledge the fact, and I have to account for myself here when I say that I am not hiding any agenda here. So when it comes to the fact that I am wholly transparent and wholly honest, you can find me on the plaza and you can hold me personally accountable. More than that, Senate is the Senate is the count is the is the structure that is used to hold us as SRC students accountable, and because of that, and even if we think of, even if we look at the fact that there are 333, 333 seats on Senate, six of them are occupied by students. So it speaks to my issue that I raised in my manifesto with regards to representation. So I hope I've answered your question. So that concludes the first round. We will open up for a second round now, which means all candidates are available to have a question asked. Um, this time around, because all the candidates can respond at this stage, I'm looking for some fresh hands. So any questions? Yes, one. Hi, my question. Can we have quiet in the house, please? My question is to Gloria. You mentioned that. Um, from the <coughs> students, only, oh, sorry, only 20% of the students are international students. And I agree that we all need to be included, we need to include them as well. But however, you do not seem to have any plans for the 80%. So how are you going to be an SRC member representing the students, but you don't have any plans for us? All right, second hand, Sia. I don't know if you guys will hear me, but um, I hope you will. My question is directed at Mini. Um, Mini, we often see people coming with uh, stories and claiming things. Uh, as we came on your manifesto as well, that you met with SRC members who sat on the committee discussing um, parking, and you have scheduled meetings with management. I want you to tell me who of those SRC members you sat with, what you discussed, and what and um, who and um, which um, which person in management that you spoke to regarding this party so we can actually you know know that you're actually telling the truth and not claiming things. Transparency. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Father Spread, Can we apply to the house, please? Thank you. Thank you. And the final question? Alright. Um, <laughs> question is directed to Niall. Um, you've said that you will avail yourself to the students to make yourself transparent and accountable. But for all we know, if Zizipo had been asked that same question or the same question last year, she could have very easily said the same thing. Yes. Now, I'm willing to trust you, but I want to understand what you are going to do structurally to make sure that independents in the future are going to be held more accountable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, thank you. The first candidate up to respond is Gloria. Um, thank you for your question. Um, I share your concerns and I understand them. Um, a lot of students have been asking the same thing. But I don't think that there's any reason why the issues that are faced by international students and the solutions there too should be divorced from the rest of the, this, the university. So for example, um, extending residence places, um, that would include and that would um, involve me um, working collaboratively with the rest of my potential team to extend residence places. That would help international students, that would help South African students. The bailout fund, right now the bailout fund um, has insufficient funds and um, the, the fundraising is, is not adequate. So if we come up with ideas, I have some of my own ideas such as appealing to alumni, um, just exploring more aggressive um, methods of fundraising money for the bailout fund so we can help international students and help South African students. Things like transformation of the curriculum to include African um, um, academics, African writers, African material will, will help everyone in terms of um, creating the Afropolitan University that we want. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sia, for that question. Um, the current SRC members that I've spoken to is Gregory Keel, who is currently on the SRC and who also sits on the University Development and Building Committee, which is, would be responsible for actually creating more parking for students. And with management, I've spoken to the Executive Director of Property and Services, Mr. Andre Tace, and he, we discussed the current problem at hand and a possible solution for this problem is actually turning those parallel parking bays up and upper and just to, like claiming more land just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Call, call, call him, call him. And um, just call him. Um, and just taking those parallel parking spots and just claiming a little bit more land just to make normal, normal parking spots just to, to have double the parking. So yeah, thank you. So my question is to Busi, and um, we all know your mother body says the ANC says that they are pro-Palestine, right? And that's all good and well when they talk. But why is the Israeli ambassador still lambing in South Africa? So I want to know from you, is that how... So what I need want to know from you is what is your position on Israel and Palestine? Because we all know what the mother body position is, but now what is your personal position? And don't come with that G4S stuff here, workers must go, workers must stay, and benefits must stay. No. What is your personal position? And no two-state nonsense, please. Thank you. Ideology is important when running for a leader. Okay. 
Wait, hands have been taken. Can we have the second hand? Who was the second person that raised your hand? And then you the third? The second, yes, yes. Can you protect our people? Lutu, Sia, ideology is an important part when you're running for a position. I have made a ruling. The candidate has agreed to answer the question. And so we'll go forth. We're carrying on with the proceedings. Thank you. I, I have made a ruling. On what? On what your, what your comrade Sia has just... <laughs> okay, let's do it. You, have, you have 30 seconds. Thanks. The point of order is It's out of order to be disrespectful to candidates and uh, say to them that when they answer, they must not speak nonsense. That's the first one. Because it is expected that candidates must not respond to questions in a disrespectful way. So this thing must be neutral. Oh, can we have quiet? Spencer, can you wrap up, please? The second one is uh, on that speaker misleading this house about Sasko having a mother food. There's no Sasko that has a mother food. The mother food of uh, that only exists in the alliance that Sasko is in. Okay, learn to, okay. Those are the two points of order. Thank you. The third one is we need please be vigilant as we chair this Noted. session. So Noted. That we don't have to disrupt this session. Thank you, Lunti United. Thank you. All right, silence. Can you now respect the person that is about to speak? Thank you. group yeah. moving into the residence there could be huge safety implications and it's not to say that you have to like deconstruct these um, 
horrible structures that are in place because I think that they're largely autonomous to themselves and they'll do whatever they want regardless of what authorities tell them to do. You know, even though there are discipline structures in place, but the fact that this still happens tells me that it's probably going to be an issue. So what, do you, what are you going to do to make sure that people feel safe? Okay, thanks. And the fourth final hand. My question is to Louise. Um, okay, you are running for you are on the Commerce Student Council, right? And okay, I, I don't know about the other Commerce students, but for me it was like uh, Commerce Student Council is there. We vote in the beginning, in the end of the year, but we don't really see what they're doing, right? Sure. But, okay, so we know they are existing. Like the SRC, for example, last year they ran and we voted, and I can say. For me, I don't know about the rest of you guys, I don't really see like uh, what they have done because every year SIC comes, they run for academic exclusion and financial exclusion and all those things. But it's like we don't really see, like, okay, guys, this is how we have decreased financial exclusion. So I want to know uh, from you, what do you think is the importance of student governance in UCT? Sure. Sure. All right, now the candidates will be responding. The first one will be Lucy. Um, since my question was very direct through Mucho, I'm going to answer um, Mucho um, directly. <clears throat> first and foremost, um, my mother body is Sasko. Um, however, I'm going to publicly say that Sasko does agree on points the ANC has, but however, we have our own constitution, and my mother body is, we have a national leadership, and the provincial leadership that we account to. We don't account to the ANC. Um, with the question of this guy who's in the country, you are more than welcome to go to Lutuli House and ask them but why he's still here. Um, <laughs> I'm not done. <clears throat> also, uh, Sasco branches nationally and provincially account to all their leaders, so I cannot engage on issues of what the Lutuli House is doing. I can only account to my national leadership and my provincial leadership. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, I firstly want to say that the body disco itself is problematic. And it's problematic in the sense that it can only offer consultation and mediation between the student that was the, the act was committed on and the perpetrator himself. The only recommendations that disco can make is for a special leave, a change of absence and concessions. And with that being said, I'm not even going to say that disco should continue to be reviewed. Disco itself needs to be disbanded completely as a body. Secondly, because it's not binding and it continues to perpetuate the harm that is inflicted on poor students who are violated. Secondly, I want to speak to the fact that the sexual harassment policy at this university is not complete. Mm. It's not complete because the clause that states what the punishment should be for the perpetrator is not stated. Mm. That places a special emphasis on the fact that this university does not prioritize yeah. people who are harmed. Yeah. So for me, as someone who is a woman, for me who I can to a large extent understand your pain because I have been there, I want to speak to the fact that I will, in my term, complete the sexual harassment policy. I will, in my term, make sure that disco needs to be disbanded. I will, in my term, make sure that there needs to be police presence on this campus and the fact that they need to work with tribunal on this presence to protect those who are harmed. Thank you very much for your question. And yes, safety is. Can we just thank you? Thank you for your question. And yes, yes, safety is important and it's a priority. And I did say trans men can go to a male res of choice. But that statement is not uninformed. Currently at UCT, there is an opt out culture to transformation and issues. So again, I'm going to talk to my personal portfolios and the things I've done. Currently, we hold diversity workshops with Rainbow and Haiku, we hold it for reses. Currently, residents can choose to pitch up. And who doesn't come? 
Leo doesn't come, yeah. the partner doesn't come, Colin Taft doesn't come. Yes. They shouldn't be this uptight yes. culture, they should be forced to come. Yes. Because currently, yes. I work as a receptionist, mm. and people shouldn't be coming to me and saying, oh, Tato and Sandile, are, they, are, he, are he and him running again? Mm. Because they should know what pronouns to use. Yes. They should not misgender people. Yes. And, yes. and they should be able to come with their producer, I don't know. So yes, reses may be autonomous, but they should be held to these accounts. They, the excuse, I didn't know, I didn't know about this, I, I, I didn't know what the rainbow flag was, is not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Okay, importance of student governance is, is representation. Um, the importance of student governance is representation and communication. As a CSC member, I see some other faculty members in the crowd. Mark is one of them, I know. Um, so what we have done is we sit on committees and we inform faculty and the important decision makers about what students <coughs> want and what they need to be focusing on. Examples, the Admissions and Progress Change Committee, you sit on faculty boards. Example um, that I want to emphasize is a national project called the Quality Enhancement Project, which only a few student representatives actually sat on, but faculty was when they mentioned to me that they had no idea students were upset with the curriculum and that Rhodes Must Fall was a shock, and I was like, how? It's because student leaders were not doing their jobs and they were not effectively communicating with the important decision makers about what students want. So that's why it's important as students to make a wise decision in who you elect to represent you. Um, what has been done, issues that need to be addressed, that we need to emphasize on as students, as what we brought up was class rep systems that are ineffective, uh, mentorship uh, systems that are ineffective. Um, we also address disciplinary action things within the Com Labs. Um, so yes, we represent students and we communicate and that is why student governance is important. Thank you. Can we call our, our candidate Nigel to order? I think that example was very violent to my sisters, Tapa and Sandy. Um, it wasn't necessary. You're perpetuating the same violence that you seem to be standing against. Calling you to order. Thanks for being noted. I just want to check with the candidates. Would you like Nigel to retract the statement? Um, I think it is acknowledged that some, some things are best left unsaid. Um, All right. and yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so, because that wasn't a there was a point of order, there's a question open. So let's just go to the second hand and we'll go see if there's hands up to it. So the second hand that I chose? Yes, you're at the back. Um, I think the candidates who haven't answered a second question, please raise their hands. Yeah, you've heard, has already been asked a question. So can the candidates who haven't been asked a second question raise their hands? Samantha, Samantha. 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 All right. Thank you. Yes, um, at the beginning of the year when I arrived at Kramer, um, there were these uh, faculty reports for uh, recognizing the top achieving students. Now, of the approximately 14 students, I think um, 10 were white, 2 were colored, and 2 were black. Um, now, I know the statistics that UCT ref uh, reflect that UCT has like, more than 50 like black people. Now what I want to know is how do we seemingly address this problem of seemingly underachieving black students because as a black student I'm not just here to occupy space and become like yes, one yes. Six, but I also want to excel. So how do we make sure that the people excelling represent the demographics of this university? We want to excel. I don't understand that. Um, 
especially as someone who was involved in, in RMF and who has seen what you know, sort of consciousness that has raised. I think you know we were looking more for a kind of leadership that moves away from the you know the bureaucracy that the SRC you know ordinarily presents itself to to handle. We were looking for candidates who understand intersectionality, but not only say they do, they live live intersectional mm -hmm. lives. Um, and you know, and, and I was saying my question is multifaceted because it also uh, you know touches on you, uh, Nigel. You know, you, you are anti-patriarchy, but I haven't heard any stances is in terms it, of racism. I'm sorry, I have to stop you there. Is your yeah. question directed to Marcus? Can I clarify? Marcus and Nigel. No, only one, one candidate. Both Marcus. Okay. <coughs> third, third hand. Is it Martinus General? <laughs> Who was the third person I looked at and smiled and said you could ask a question? <laughs> I'll always remember your face from here. Okay, so as that person backed up, can I clarify you're not standing up to ask a question? Okay. Respect the why the other cultures, other traditions, other races. Yeah. Other races. She can't hear you. Oh, okay. Well, okay. As I said, I'm a Cape Town. Yes, I respect all. No, I respect your views. I respect. I respect people from different cultures, different races. I respect that. However, I'm attending a university situated in Cape Town. It is no representation for Cape Town culture. There's no representation for Cape Town culture. When I say Cape Town culture, I don't mean white culture, black culture, colored culture. I mean Cape Town culture. They, people don't know what makes Cape Town Cape Town. Then apart from that, there's... Apart from that, there's a thing of South Africa, you know, people... <laughs> I mean, look at how this people are looking at me, it's like, what, well, people don't have a culture. But, I mean, South African culture, South Africa is beautiful. So, I just want to know, what are you guys going to do? Or what are you going to do to establish, to show people from other countries, from other provinces, that this is where we are, what we are? Oh, okay. Um, there's a candidate here as a disabled person. Um, I feel a bit abused because the candidate is um, doesn't know firstly that there's a parking bay being built between um, North Stop, I mean um, West Stop and South Stop. My civil friend over here just confirmed that. Oh, okay. Um, yes, to the SASCO member. Um, so um, they they're prioritizing building. Yes. Um, there's a candidate prioritizing building a parking space for few um, students who have cars, but we have lecture theaters in which students who are disabled cannot access it because there are no ramps. They are not. They are not advocating for the, all of these buildings to be re, to be renovated to uh, to improve so that disabled people can participate. Even this race, whatever engineer or architect who came up with this race needs to be fired. There are too many doors here. It's because Michaela Mycroft, I'm sure all of you have seen on Facebook, she um, set a world record. Um, she she had trouble just going upstairs because there's a door here, there's a door here, there's a, there's doors everywhere, and she is dependent. So I want to know what are you gonna do about people like that, and what are you going to about disabled students? Right now? So we can wrap up the proceedings. I know people are eager to get elsewhere. Thank you. Okay, I would like to thank the lady for the question that she asked, and I completely. 
completely agree with you. So now, it was in relation to the curriculum that needs to represent and look like the demographics of black people. I want to make something clear. Me personally, I do not agree with the fact that our intelligence is largely measured on the scale of Western standards. So when we talk about the, uh, the existence of this university, it needs to, in all its spheres, represent what this university claims like it looks like black people like it claims that it looks like black people. It is not enough for UCT to claim racial, um, racial, <laughs> racial uh, deference by admitting black students um, as if they are doing black students a favor in this university. We need to, we need to be represented in our academics. We need, so when we, the, the, the whole platform of advertising students that excel in this university needs to be eradicated because it is perpetuating the idea that we do not want. We, until black people are being seen as excellent in this university, then they can ad advertise our, our marks, then they can advertise our, our where we stand because we want to stand where this university stands and that goes beyond just representing us as being inclusive in this university. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the question. So I realize that me, myself, I cannot comment on the pain and the experience of many students who experience intersectional oppression at this university. But one thing I've made a priority in my experience on Common Student Council is listening and managing the concerns. And so today, well, how, how I spent my afternoon was in a meeting with the Dean of my faculty, in which I confronted him, along with the Postgraduate Common Student Council, on the issues of, firstly, academic privacy, the issues of June SUPS, the issues of the need for continuous evaluations which are anonymous so when you get discriminated by a lecturer in class you can report it immediately but beyond this ladies and gentlemen when we talk about a vanguard okay was we think that it is essential if you look across this slc particularly when it relates to things of disabled students who are horribly underrepresented you need members of the slc uh, who are experienced and have, have proven themselves in their ability to listen to students in the first place and consult and bring those matters to actual policy. But beyond that, will we represent as students from five sectors of university who understand the politics of this university and will move beyond activism to real policy we need? Thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say that's a very problematic question. It's problematic in the sense that while we're facing rape culture in universities, you want us to teach Cape Town culture. Knowing very well that Cape Town culture promotes a white culture that is dominated by white people. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, I'd like to first problematize. Can we respect the candidate speaking, please? Thank you. I'd like to first problematize the fact that um, the, the fact that the person that you're referring to sought to prioritize parking bays for people who are already elitist, people who have opportunities in this institution and are recognized. Yes. This is the first problem that we need to take out. And I'd like to say, I'd like to say, it is through their SRC, which they dominated, that they had a lot of um, reshuffles, or they had a lot of um, designing that problematize the thing. So what we're doing is, as, as, as SASCO first, is that when we get elected, we need to stay in office. Yeah. The Labour and Services um, portfolio is vacant at this moment. No one is occupying that. That's where we need to ensure that we we voice out the, 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 we voice out those um, concerns that you voice out due to disability infrastructures which are not there across campuses, which could have been um, voiced out if there were people in that portfolio, but then they were not. So that's the thing we need to ensure that if SRC stays in power and SRC delivers. That's what SASCO is ready to do. Today. and how do you plan on you know ensuring that this is a safe space for everyone 
There's no other hands or only Sandy. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank the Trans Collective and the politics that they're advocating for because I strongly identify with um, what you're um, trying to achieve. So right now we have a culture that expects marginalized people to explain themselves, to continue to place themselves in violent spaces for the purposes of someone's ignorance. How will you, as the, when you're in HRC, go about um, bringing this culture where people use this thing we call Google with our nice thing called Eduro and go and find things out for themselves? Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what we need to understand is that we need to hold UCT management responsible. Yes. What we need to understand is that we need to, given the fact that I am the former ambassador of my province, one thing that I've realized is that, listen, 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 ladies and gentlemen, one thing, one thing, ladies and gentlemen, listen. if you want to show your approval, one thing I have realized that being part of Teenagers Against Sexual and Social Abuse and the Children's Rights Committee, the only thing for us to do is create awareness and it is by us creating a youth dialogue between UCT management and UCT students in talking about the, 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 the sexual harassment, the, the, any form of harassment that they are facing at this institution so they can hold UCT accountable, so that UCT management can see that UCT they do not care about UCT students, all their kids, they care about our money and not the students. Um, 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 um. I, I, with my closing statement, I want to make one thing clear that you all need to understand. The University of Cape Town does not care about its students. Now it has come to the point that we are so tired of deliberating and discussing our pain and what we are going through with, with, with this institution. They know what they are putting us through. What we need to do is ensure that we mobilize, that we come together and we create a strong and functional student parliament that is there to represent you. Not only to say, I'm representing you, but to ensure that you are a part of this representation process, which means that you are included in debates, which means that you are sitting down in each and every... Both rise, everyone. I'm Samantha Baker Baker. Candidate number three. Thank you. Candidate number three. We need to look at addressing issues of accountability in the student leadership structures. We also need to make sure students are aware of structures that are in place to support them academically. And thirdly, we need to address the inefficiencies in these systems to ensure that no students are being left behind, that every student can achieve their academic excellence. You deserve better. Candidate number four, Louise Bespia. Thank you. Um, I stand as students who want an SRC that is accountable. I stand as students who cannot afford to be in this institution. I stand as students who want to fight for transformation and decolonization. My name is Zipo Majova, candidate number 15. I stand as 27,000 students. So I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to you very seriously. Last night interrogations, Luntu raised a very important point, which is more so than any other year. These SRC elections need to be taken seriously and they need to be respected. And the reason why it needs to happen is we cannot have risk, we cannot be risky in who we choose when we have issues like exclusion. We cannot have risk when all of a sudden we need to face issues of patriarchy, when we need to face issues of ableism and transphobia. The issue we had in this year's SRC is we had a situation in which we had a situation in which heading up our societies was someone who had never come from a society executive, someone heading up social responsiveness who had never come from one. But we need to experience these both people. the narrative of students who have been lost in the discourse and in the representation of this narrative I can never claim to represent a narrative of other students who've been oppressed 
I can only lead a narrative that I know myself. We as V want you students who have been structurally marginalized, who have been lost in the discourse, to claim your UCT. We want you to claim the meaning of V, and we want you to claim what V should be. My name is not Colin Daga. I'm candidate number 20. You cannot be, you cannot be, you cannot be lost or inconsistent in your fight for social justice. You need to be consistent. I'm candidate number 20 on the ballot. Tonight, I've spoken to the issue of misrepresentation of us as students at this university. My name is Nal Medinas. I'm candidate number 16, running for SRC 2016, and I repeat, nothing about us without us. We saw that in the only year Sastro was not part of the SRC, the SRC brought shame and nothing. <laughs> this is why you say that Sastro, you are dead and you are alive. Go for a leadership for social change, go for a leadership that will store the dignity back to the students. Um, please could you vote number 21, candidate, candidate number 21, vote Mr. Sien Mumalo. Please come and join us to show you guys what active leadership means outside to uh, uh, to problematize the rape culture market. Thank you. for the rights and welfare of students from ground level. Not only for those that are here at UCT, but for those that are here at Hi guys, I'm going to bring it down for two seconds and I want to read what I wrote out. I just want to start by apologizing to Tata and Sindile. I learn every day and I acknowledge that my statement was violent towards the collective and legitimized, and I used it to legitimize, was legitimize what I said, so I sincerely apologize. 
I also want to ac acknowledge intersectionality and what it means to be poor and black, disabled, poor and queer, and that informs my ideology. You need an SRC that listens. My ideas of transformation, uh, those are my ideas of transformation, but SRC's transformation is every student's transformation. It's a transformation that listens. On the SRC, what I want to be is a megaphone for all of the transformation. Minnie Hadir and I'm candidate number 10. I not only wish to see a campus where all students' voices are being heard, but also being prioritized. I'm not only running on problems, I'm running on solutions, practical solutions for this campus. Once again, I'm candidate number 10, Mini Hadir. And thank you. My name is Gloria Chikanda, candidate number seven. I want to represent international students. I want to tackle fees. I want to tackle funding. I want to tackle integration. And I want to tackle the rights and duties of foreign learners at UCT. Let's make UCT the global meeting place that it claims to be. Vote, vote for 